I want to continue our discussions of Git and I want to move forward from talking about branches and I want to talk about the other side of branches, which is merging. So let's let's do some quick review. One of the one of the great innovations of Git is that it makes it incredibly cheap and easy and fast for you to create branches. This wasn't always the case if you ever used older version control systems like CVS or Subversion. It was it was a big deal to start a branch because it it basically committed everybody on the project to having this branch exist on the server and um, it was a lot of work doing merges and I don't know, it, it, it meant that they didn't tend to happen as often. So Git comes along and what it does is it makes branching and merging the default thing you do whenever you do any work. You, you have a line of development and I want to do something new. So I go off and then eventually I merge back on. So you, I don't know, the analogy that I would give you, it's almost like if you need to change the tire on your car, you're not going to stop in the middle of the highway. You're going to go over onto the shoulder out of the way of traffic. Traffic's going to keep going. You're going to slow down. You're going to stop. You're going to deal with whatever you're going to deal with. And then you're going to merge back in and you're going to keep going. That's kind of what we're doing with Git. We want to allow as many people as possible to keep doing what they're doing. We don't want to shut down the whole project in order to do some kind of a merge or for people to break off and try new experiments. We want to make it easy to experiment, easy to try things. So Git makes it trivial for this to happen. Okay, so a quick review on branches. What did we talk about last time? Uh, we said that if I wanted to create a branch, that I had a couple of ways of doing it. So one way to do it is to say git branch and then the name of the branch, whatever I want to call it. So if I wanted to have a, a branch, let's say uh, that I was fixing an issue, issue one, two, three. I could say git branch dash issue one, issue one, two, three. Now, interestingly, the name of the branch is unique to me. Uh, I can call this branch one, two, issue one, two, three. I don't have to have anyone else agree with it. This branch really isn't for other people. This branch is for me. So it's happening here locally in my repository. So I say git branch issue one, two, three. And what does it do? It creates it. How do I change to that branch? Git checkout issue one, two, three. So when you switch to uh, a branch, issue one, two, three, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go and get the snapshot. So if I were to say git show issue one, two, three, it'll show me that this is the branch that I'm on right now. This is the commit that I'm on. And it's going to get that snapshot. It's gonna check it out so that I can work with it here. So if I switch to a different branch, git checkout master, it's gonna to switch to the master branch. So it goes to a different branch and it's gonna check out those files into my working tree and into the staging area. So your a checkout is like checking a book out of the library. You're getting it out and you're going to work with it now. You're gonna borrow it and you're gonna have that, that particular set of files, the versions of the files that were in that snapshot are now gonna be in your, in your local working directory. Um, a note, a couple people asked me about this. If I have changes in my in my branch, what's going to happen? So um, let's say, for example, that I um, I make a change to the README. Let's say that I put an, a new line at the top of this file and I save it. And you can see that there is a modification to the README. So what happens if I change branches right now? Git checkout issue one, two, three. So what you're gonna see here is that it has let me switch to issue one, two, three. However, it also recognizes that there's a modification. That's what the M means. There's a modification to this file. So if I do git status, you can see that the change that I made when I was on the other branch is still here. So git has seen that the readme file is the same in both of those places. And so when I go to switch between them, um, 
when I go to, you know, I go to, when I go to switch between them, it says, okay, I can reconcile this. I'm going to pull in all the other files the way they were, but this one file is different. I'm just going to leave that alone in here. I'm not going to have that problem. Um, okay, now let's make a change. So let's go and modify the readme. And what if I put a new line of text at the top of this file in the, re in the readme on the 123 branch? Save this, add it, commit it. Okay, so I got a new line at the top of the readme. Now let's go back to the master branch. And let's edit the, let's do the same thing again. Let's edit the readme. I'm gonna put a new line up here at the top and I'll just say ABC like this. So I've put some other change in here. So what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna try and check out to this other branch. And I have a, I have a change in my working tree. And so Git has to decide what to do. So let's do Git checkout issue one, two, three. So this time it doesn't work. And it says your local changes to the following files would be overwritten by the checkout. And so it says basically whatever you just did to the readme file is gonna get destroyed because as soon as it switches branches, what it has to do is it has to check out the readme file from the other snapshot and put it into my working tree. So the version of the files that are in my directory are gonna change every time that I do a checkout. You don't necessarily realize it, but all those files get updated. So it says this, uh, this readme file is different in the working tree than it will be if I check out the other one and the other one's gonna delete your changes. So I, what I've done is I've aborted. I'm gonna stop and please commit your changes or stash them before you switch branches. So what it's basically saying to me is you either need to commit your work or you can use what's called a stash. Uh, git stash is a command if you're interested in how it works, you can go and take a look. But basically git stash allows you to take, um, it's like a clipboard almost. You can take a bunch of work that's in your working tree, put it into the stash, kind of stash it away to the side, do your work, and then get it back again. So you have essentially like a stack where you can um, go and you know look through, like temporarily store these things. But I would say probably the better thing to do is to just commit it just to commit your changes. So if I did that right now, git status, um, let's add the readme file. And so now my tree is gonna be clean. So now what it's gonna do, it's taken those changes, it's put them into a new commit. My working tree is clean. Now if I say git checkout issue one, two, three, there's no problem, I can switch branches. So when you're switching around between the different branches, be aware that um, it's going to depend on whether or not your working directory is clean. You want to have a you want to have a clean working tree before you move around. Okay, so the other way to make a new branch is to say git checkout dash b issue one two four. So I'm going to work on another bug issue one two four, and so I'm going to do checkout with a dash b meaning create this branch if it doesn't exist. And so now it has created the branch and it has switched to the branch. What if I did this command again, what would it say? Well, you can't create this branch because it already exists. So it says, you know, fatal, this branch that you want me to create already exists. Okay, so that's fine. So when, we, when we're talking about um, the branch that we're on right now, if I look at the log, you'll also see that it's always gonna have this thing called head. Head is currently pointing to issue 124 like this. So when we talk about head, head is where you are right now. It is the particular snapshot that you have checked out or it's the it's the branch that you're on. It's, it, it's where I am at this moment. So a lot of commands use head implicitly. So when I said git checkout dash b issue 124, what I was really saying is this. I was really saying, make me a new branch called issue 124, and I want it to point to this location. I want it to point to head. 
So if you don't put it in there, it just assumes head like that. Okay, but you can put anything you want in here. So if I wanted to say, make me a new branch and I want it to point to the same commit that the master branch is currently pointing to, I could do that. Or I could say, make me a new commit and have it point to the same commit that issue one, two, three is pointing to. So if I did this, let's do it with one, two, five, let's say one, two, five. One, two, five is gonna be a new branch. It's gonna to point to the same place as issue one, two, three. So we look at our log. And you can see that issue 125 is where I'm sitting. And you can see that it's, it's placed at the same location as issue 123. You can also do things like if I wanted to point a branch to this commit right here, I could copy that uh, commit and I could say git checkout dash b issue 126. And then I can give it a commit. I could say, give me this commit, or I could give the first part of a commit. Both ways would work. Press enter, um, lock exists. Another git process seems to be running in this repository. Oh, I've got um, git status. Git checkout. There we go. So I've got now I am pointing back to this issue right here. This is where I'm sitting and that's where issue 126 is. So when you're, when you're writing these commands, um, you can always tell it where you wanna point it. Now I wanna give you one trick. And if you write down one thing in what I see, hopefully you'll write down more than one thing, but hopefully if you write down one thing, this is something that you can do that will help you many, many times. So if you say git, checkout dash b issue uh, 123 and what that really means is check out a new branch that points to head so if i do this right now it says you can't do it because it already exists now sometimes you're going to mess up your branches you're going to accidentally commit something and wish that you didn't and you want to basically go back you want to hit undo Git doesn't have like an undo command, but it has a number of ways that you can undo mistakes that you make. So a really powerful one that I will tell you about, because we're doing merges today, if you ever need to undo a merge, you can, do, you can use this trick. Now, before I show you this trick, this trick only works if you haven't pushed these changes up to another repository. So what I'm about to show you is good when you're working locally and you want to, you're just messing around, you're trying things out and you wanna undo what you just did a second ago. Okay, so let's say that currently um, I've gotten myself into a mess and I've got my issue 126 branch pointing back to this right here, but that's not where I want it to be. I really want it to, uh, if I go over to my master branch, I really want it to be pointing here instead of down here. So you see how it's in the wrong spot. So I wanna move this branch up here. So what I can do is I can say, git checkout, Instead of dash B, I'm going to do dash capital B. And I'm going to say issue one, is it issue one, two, three. I think that's what, before I do this, uh, no, 126, issue 126. Okay, git checkout dash capital B, uh, issue 126. And then what I put here, I'm going to say, I want to move this to the same place where master is currently pointing. So when you do a capital B, what it means is create the branch if it doesn't exist, but if it exists, then I want to reset it to this other location. So the branch just got reset. So now if I do git log, you'll see that the master branch and the issue 126 branch both point here. Now, why does that work? It works because a branch is just a name that is attached to a commit. Like that's all it is. So this name issue 126 is pointing to this commit. And when a, when a commit moves, the, um, the commit that it's on moves. So a really interesting thing when we're talking about branches, we're always gonna talk about a branch as being a particular commit, like this branch is this commit. But we're also gonna talk about this linear history that this 
uh, branch follows. Like this, this commit has a parent and it's this, and this one has multiple parents, which we're gonna talk about today. And it goes back, it goes on and on and on down. So we can see it. Like if I were to say git log graph, you would see that you start to see this tree of commits and all these commits that are happening here, they're all in the history of this branch. So this, this, when we talk about a branch, we mean two things. We mean where it is right now, and we also mean the line of commits that it, um, mean, we mean the tip of the branch and we mean the whole branch. We mean both of those things together. Okay, so, all right, let's move on. So a big concept that we keep referring to is this idea of snapshots. When I make a commit, I am snapshotting all of the files, all the folders, everything in my tree. It, it is gonna get put into the staging area and it's gonna get assembled into a commit. However, it's, it's often convenient for us to think about things in terms of differences, as opposed to thinking about things in terms of um, absolute state. So the whole tree has a state, but I usually don't think about it that way. I think about a change. So if you look at this log, you'll see, for example, that this commit update the readme. If I said git log dash p, it would show me here, it would show me this change. So you see here, it gives me not only the information about the commit, but it also gives me this information here, this what we call a diff. So the diff is not what Git is storing. GIF doesn't, Git doesn't store diffs. Git store, it's hard to say, Git stores uh, snapshots. But between two snapshots, I can calculate a difference. So for example, if I did a Git log and I said, okay, this one, um, What's the difference, for example, between what's on the master branch and what's back here? So if I said git diff master and this commit here, it would print out and show me the changes. It would say, okay, here's all the changes between those two commits. Um, the readme file is different. These files were different. Here's some changes to a bunch of files. And you could go through and you could look at all of these different changes that are here. There's all kinds of places where you can ask to see what happened. Like for example, if I say git show, git show will show me the current commit. Or if I said git show, show me this commit right here. Give me another one. It, this is a bad example. Let me try this one because it's a merge commit. Git show, if I did this one, it would show me here's the changes that happened inside of that commit. Lots and lots of places where we're gonna work with diffs. So the reason I'm gonna bring this up is because we're gonna be talking a lot today about, when we think about merges, we're gonna be thinking about diffs as a way of evaluating two snapshots. But in Git, they get stored as a snapshot. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm gonna take you through some ex some real examples today and show you how, how this all works. But um, if, if we take a, a repository and we look at a pull request, so the top pull request right here is a pull request by Calvin. And um, if I go into this pull request and I click on files changed, I'm gonna see a diff. So this diff that you're seeing here is a graphical representation of what this change looks like. And in Git, uh, in GitHub rather, you can actually go to the end of uh, a pull request. Like if I if I were to go, whoops, go back to this pull request here, you'll see down at the bottom here, it says pro tip, you can add dot patch or dot diff to the end of the URL to get a plain text view. So if I went to the end of this and I said dot diff, it would print out this right here which is the same kind of thing we're seeing when we say git show, right? Like it's a diff. So the way that you read this is it says, this is a difference between two different versions of this file, between version A of this file and version B of this file. So this is the file and these are the particular, um, these are the, uh, the hashes that go with each of those files. So then what it does is it shows you 
These are called hunks. So here's the first one right here. The first, maybe this will be better if I show you in color. So the first part of this hunk, it says, starting at line 53, so you can see at 53 here, it's not showing me the whole file. It's just showing me a bit of context. So in this case, it's showing me one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. So it looks like three lines of context. So three lines of context above, three lines of context below, three lines above, three lines below, etc. So any line that starts with a blank line, um, let's look at this diff again. Anything that has a blank line at the beginning, like this, is a line of context. So it's there to help you and also the diffing tool, Git, it's used to help it figure out what's going on. Like where does this act, where does this change fit in the file? And then what it shows is it shows a minus sign when a line gets deleted and a plus sign when a line gets added. And if you edit a line, you're gonna see a minus and a plus. So in this case, you can see what's happened here is that this has been added. The link has been added to the line, right? Whereas in this case, you can see that four lines were added like so. In this case, you can see that it's been edited Right, so in this case, uh, an on-click handler has been added. Over here, you can see that it's now it now says disabled instead of button, etc. So Git presents to us a a diff, and we we read diffs either in raw format like this. So a diff is this is called a diff file, and it's made up of all these hunks. So this is the first hunk here and it, it starts at line 53. And then there's another hunk which skips a bunch of lines and starts at line 74. Down here, you can see another one. So here inside this file, line 38, this addition has been made. Line 63, at this line, this addition has been made. So a diff is a, is a really quick way for us to see a change because I don't want to take two snapshots and have to go through every file and compare them all. I want Git to present to me a just a quick list and say, these are the things that changed. So that's what a pull request is. A pull request is I want to pull in this snapshot and the diff shows you, okay, here's what's different between, uh, between these two snapshots when you're going to compare them. And you can always do this yourself in Git by saying git diff commit one and commit two. If you ever want to look at the difference between two things and see what's going on. Or if I, um, if I go into the readme file and I delete a line and I say git diff, it's showing me the diff between what's in my working tree and what's in the staging area. Okay. So that when you're trying to understand, you know, where things have changed. So when I have a, when I do a git diff between two commits, commit one and commit two, it's showing them between two snapshots. And when I say git diff, it, it's just showing me what's different between what's in my working tree and what's in the staging area. Okay, so now that we've talked about branches, we've talked about making changes and snapshots. I want to talk to you about bringing these things back together. Okay. So when we want to bring a branch back in, into, integrate it back into another branch, there's two ways that we can do it. Both of them use the same command. The command is git merge. Okay. So let's do the following. I'm going to, um, I have, I have, um, whoops, git log. Okay, so currently issue 126 is at the same location as master. So these two things are both pointing to the same commit. So in other words, they're essentially merged right now. They are in the same place. They are together. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of them and move it forward from the other one. So I'm gonna take issue 126 and I'm gonna make a cha another change to the readme. So I'm on issue 126, get status says you're on issue 126 and there's been a change to the readme file. Perfect, so I'm gonna git add the readme file. I'm gonna commit it, uh, remove line from readme. And here's what our log looks like. So the master branch is sitting here on this commit, here. And then one up from it, ahead of it, is where issue 126 is. So this commit right here. So let's say that I fix a bug in a project and I go and I update the documentation or I fix a JavaScript file or I do something, I make a commit. And my commit is just one ahead of the other branch or it's two ahead of the other branch. Okay, let's add another commit. Just let's say that uh, while we're editing this readme file, whoops, we're editing the, uh, editing the readme file and we say, let's get rid of this and let's get rid of this. So we make a couple more changes and we add the readme file again, uh, more updates to readme. And so now what's happened is the master branch is here and then one, two commits ahead of that is where my other branch is sitting. Now I'm currently, my head is sitting on issue 126. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to merge issue 126 back into master. So why do I wanna do that? I wanna merge it back into master because I wanna have as a project, as a community, I wanna have one branch one branch, which is my main branch, okay? So this branch that it's sort of the authoritative branch, it's the source of truth. We could all, we could develop the code in a million different directions, but there's one version of it that we all agree is, this is the one that we're all working forward on. So every time we branch off and do something, we wanna come back, we wanna bring those changes back in again. Cause right now, these changes do not exist on the master branch. The master branch doesn't have them. Like I could prove it to you if I, if I go back to the master branch, you see that those other ones, they don't even appear, they're not there. They're still in Git, but they're not on this branch. So I have, I have to get them onto this branch. So I'm gonna go back to my other branch and I've got to try and merge these two things together. So how do I do that? Okay, here's the process. When you want to merge, you always merge into or onto a branch. So you need to move to the branch that you want to merge into. So I want to affect the master branch. I want to change what the master branch is. So I'm going to switch to that branch. That's step one. So git checkout master. Now to do this merge, I'm gonna say git merge, and then I'm gonna tell it what other branch I wanna merge in here. Issue 126. Okay, now let me explain what just happened. It just did what is known as a fast forward merge. So what it did was it took my master branch, which used to be sitting on one commit here, and it moved it forward to the location of the other branch. And I can show you what I mean. Take a look at what's happening up here now. So the master branch used to be here, and now it's moved forward. It has fast forwarded up to this branch right here. So this is the simplest and most desirable type of merge there is. Uh, when you do a fast forward merge, everything goes perfectly smooth because the branch, the code was here, we make a couple of changes and then we just move forward and we accept that this is the new position. So it's a lot like what I showed you before where I moved the branch manually by saying git checkout to some forward thing. So if you think of a branch as a line of development, what we're really doing is we're just moving that line further up so that we can uh, make those changes to it.
fast forward merges are great. Now when you do a merge, uh, let's do that merge again. So I'm gonna move the master branch back here just so I can show you uh, how I would do this. So how would I move the master branch back? I could say git checkout dash capital B master and give it a new commit. So let's try that merge again. I'm gonna say git merge, but this time I'm gonna say FF only, and then I'm gonna say issue 126. So when I do a merge, I'm gonna let git choose which way that it does the merge. And I told you there's multiple ways, so in a minute I'm gonna show you another way. But in this case here, I'm saying I want to do a merge, but I'm only going to, I'm only interested in doing a fast forward merge. If you can't do a fast forward merge, I want this merge to fail. So I'm gonna press enter and it says, no problem, I did the merge. I did a fast forward merge. I fast forwarded the master branch to the same location as your other branch. So that's great. Okay. So let's let's undo it again. I'm gonna undo it again. I'm gonna reset my master branch back again and let's uh, let's do the following. Imagine that instead of having, let's just look at what we have. Uh, no, it's 126. So right now we have a scenario where master branch is here and then we've got two branches that go up like this, two commits rather, on issue 126. And these have been changes to the readme. So whatever changes have occurred inside of these two commits, we know that they are unique from the changes that have happened from here down because whatever happened from here down is already included in these commits line of development. So they all share a line of development. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break the line of development between what's on the master branch and what's on this other branch. So imagine if you will, that I have three people or two people working on the project and one person is going to get their code merged onto the master branch before the other person. So the master branch is gonna go off in one direction and my changes go off in another direction. So let's see what happens in this case. Uh, I'm gonna go to the master branch and I'm gonna edit the readme file. And inside the readme file, I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna put um, hello world at the top of my readme file. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna add the readme file. I'm gonna commit this and I'm gonna say um, adding hello world to read me like that. So now what I have is instead of being here, my master branch has moved forward to here, which is like a different direction of changes than happened with my other branch. So now let's try and do this merge again. Git merge FF only issue 126. So this time I say, I wanna do a fast forward merge and Git says it's not possible to do a fast forward merge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bail because there are changes. Both of these branches have made changes to the readme file and they're not compatible with each other. Let's do it again and let's, let's let Git choose how to do this merge. So it says, I am gonna do the merge and I'm gonna merge all these files together, except that I have a problem. As soon as I tried to edit the readme file, there is a problem. It says, automatic merge failed, please fix the conflicts and then commit the result. So if I do a git status right now, you can see that I have a new section called unmerged paths. So git is, amaz git is amazing, you can give git two pieces of code where people have moved things around, renamed files, added files, deleted files, update things, and Git will just, just put it all together. Like it can do incredible things. 
except if you both change the same line of code. If you both change the same line of code, what is Git supposed to do? Who? It's not that you couldn't program it to automatically do something, but it wouldn't necessarily be right. So I have to make a choice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this file up. Um, first, I'll just open it up in Emacs in like a, a text only uh, view so you can see what it would look like. So what you can see here are called conflict markers. So you can see the beginning of one version and then you can see the end of the version with the equal signs, and you can see the, the next version here, uh, issue 126. So what Git is saying is it's saying, the version on your head, which is master, I'm, so I'm on the master branch, the version on head has this at this line right here, and the other file doesn't have anything at this line, like it's deleted, it deleted the line. So what do you want me to do? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to manually edit this. So I'm going to delete the conflict markers and I'm going to make the file look the way that I want it to look. So this is how I want the file to look. So I'm going to take the changes from the one branch, the changes from the other branch, and I'm going to, instead of automatically merging them, I'm just going to manually merge them together uh, using, using this style like this, okay? Now if I didn't do this, I'll close this. Let me open this up and I'll just show you what it would look like if I was looking at the readme file uh, here. Um, here, is it not gonna give me a pretty view? Oh, there it goes, it's just slow to load. So sometimes your editor is going to give you this pretty view of how things look to help you. So it says, head is the current change, the incoming change is on issue 126, and this is what it looks like between the two of them. So whether you edit this manually, or you use, like in Visual Studio Code, they have these buttons at the top where you can, like if I click on compare changes, it'll show me a side-by-side -side comparison between the two of them. Like one version has this line and the other version doesn't have this line. And if I if I go to the readme, up at the top it says, except current change, so current change is what's in head, except incoming change is the change that is coming in from the other branch, except both, sometimes you want both of them and not one, etc. So what if I said, except current change, VS Code will just do what I did in Emacs. It'll just delete the conflict markers and give you a file that looks like this. And you save that file. And if I go back here, get status, you'll see that this uh, file is still in the unmerged state. So what I have to do is I have to add it. Um, so I'm gonna say git add readme.md, git status. Okay, so this untracked file is just a, an Emacs file, a backup file. Let me delete that. RM. Okay, git status. That's good. Okay, so what we have now is that we are currently in the middle of a merge. And so I'm on the master branch. I'm trying to merge in my 126, issue 126 branch. I have automatically merged every other file in the project except for this one file and I just needed to manually do it and now it says if you want to conclude the merge just do git commit. So I'm going to say git commit and it pops open my editor. So by the way if you if you've never done this before um, you can configure your you can configure your editor so that whenever your whenever Git needs to open up an editor, it'll open up your preferred editor. And you don't have to use VI or Emacs if you wanted to use VS Code, Git, Editor. There's a way to do it. Um, you have to do... I don't know. You can come in here and you can look. There's like a command that you have to put in it'll, and it'll let you do it. 
So I'm inside, I'm gonna type out my log message. By default, it gives me a log message of merge branch 126 into master, which is good enough for me. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna exit, and now I'm gonna look at my log. Okay, so here's what just happened. I have my master branch is now sitting on top of this commit right here. This commit says merge branch 126 into master. And let me show you this um, as a graph, git log graph. So what I want you to notice here is that I'm sitting on this commit and this commit is what's called a merge commit. So we had to do we had to do a recursive merge, a three-way merge to make this happen. So it has taken um, this commit right here, 344F266, this one, and it has also taken 71C, this one right here, issue 126. And so we've got two commits. It's put a third commit, I need three hands. It's put a third commit above those and it has merged those two together. So it's created a new snapshot, which is connecting both lines of development. So you can see that I now have a single line of development going forward, but it includes two different paths of changes. These two commits here, and also this commit here. So it has it has folded together those different lines of development. And this commit here also includes the changes that had to be made in order to get those lines of commit, those two lines of those branches to come together nicely because the code was, was different in both of them. I had to manually edit it to make it work in the two of those. So this is called a recursive merge and um, it, a recursive merge is different than a fast forward merge because a recursive merge needs to create a new commit. It doesn't modify the old commits. The old commits are still here. Everything else is the same, but it puts a new one above them to connect them. So it draws a line between those two commits and that's what's happening here by merging them. So whenever you see a commit and the commit says, like here's another one here, it's a merge commit. A merge commit always connects two other or more. Like you can actually connect many different um, branches together. There's a famous commit in the Linux kernel where there are 66 different branches that are all merged together. So they call that an octopus merge. Anyway, we we won't do, uh, or at least you shouldn't you shouldn't do octopus merges. Uh, two is fine. Okay, so let me. Uh, let me take you through, let me just take you through an example. I thought I would show you an example of what happens when you're doing all of, all of this merging and, and show you how good Git is at doing a lot of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch over. I wanna, um, I wanted to take the telescope project and there's currently, f uh, what, five uh, pull requests open on the telescope project. And what I thought I would do is I would merge all of them into the master branch right now and just show you what would happen. Now, I'm not actually gonna do this on the live one because some of these are still being reviewed, but whenever you're in, like if, if I'm in a in a, a branch or a pull request on, um, if I'm in a pull request here, I actually can, if I wanted to, I could create a merge commit right now. So I can click a button and probably you've done this in your own repos for the labs. You've merged in some something that other people did, but I wanna do it in Git. Just to, like forget about GitHub, let's do it in Git so I can show you what it would look like. Okay, so I'm gonna go through these pull requests one by one and I've got another branch over here and I'm gonna, I've also got another tool here that might help us. This is a visual representation of what's going on in this tree. So this, this tool here is kind of nice. It's called uh, source tree. There's a bunch of tools like this um, that you can grab. Source tree is this app for letting you visualize what's going on in a Git repo, okay? So what you're seeing on the right over here 
is what's happening inside of the repository that I'm working with right here. And I'm on the master branch, so you can see that um, I'm on, this commit that I'm on right here is the same commit that I'm on over here. And let's let's work our way through, let's work our way through doing, uh, doing some of this stuff. So inside these pull requests, the oldest pull request we have is from April. So back in April, Calvin did a nice piece of work trying to get Kubernetes to work on Telescope. And this um, branch is C3HO Kubernetes. And so if I look at this branch over here, I could find the Kubernetes branch over here, which is right here. And you can see that this branch, this Kubernetes branch is right here. And you can see that there's a couple of commits that come up off of the master branch. Now I want you to notice what has happened with the master branch since then. So the master branch is this blue line and it has just got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other changes that have happened to it and it's gone all the way up to here. So I want you to think about if I want to merge this branch into the master branch, what's that going to mean? It's going to mean that I have to connect this line of commits with this line of commits here, this blue line of commits. And the only way to do that is forget to do what's called a three-way merge. So it needs to take the green commit here, and it needs to take the master branch, which is way up off the screen, and it has to go back be behind both of those and find a common ancestor. So the common ancestor is gonna be this commit right here. So this commit is common to both the current master branch as well as the Kubernetes branch. And so what it's gonna do is it's going to use that in order to calculate differences. So the way the code looked in April versus the way that the code looked right now. Okay, how would we do this? So whenever you wanna do a merge, you go to the branch you wanna merge into. So that would mean I wanna be on, I wanna be on the master branch, right? So I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the master branch I am, I'm on the master branch. Now I'm gonna say git merge, and then I'm gonna say which branch I wanna merge in here. So I'm gonna merge in Calvin's uh, Kubernetes branch. And it says, okay, I'm gonna have to do a recursive merge. So it's asking me to give a commit message for doing this merge. I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna close it. And you can see that it has done a merge using the recursive strategy or what's called a three-way merge. So it took code from April and code from yesterday and it folded those two things together without any problems. Now, if I go over here, this will update and you'll see what's happened. My master branch now looks like this. So I, I used to be here, this is where I was a minute ago, but now it's made a new commit and the new commit connects this but it also connects back all the way down. If I follow this red line down, 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 all the way down to here, which is where the original Kubernetes branch branched off of. But I didn't have any conflicts. So that's a lot of work. That's months and months of differences between those two branches, but Git, Git doesn't care. Git can automatically figure out how to connect those two lines of commits without any problem. Okay, so that one was clean. So we've merged that one in. Next one is this one. So this is adding a flag route um, to the back end. Six files are being changed, 295 files, or 295 lines of code are being added across six files, C, uh, C3HO flag. So let's do the same thing again. So I'm on the master branch. I'm gonna say git merge C3HO flag. And it says, okay, no problem. Just give me a uh, whatever message you wanna use for this. I'm gonna save that, I'm gonna close it. It says, okay, I did a recursive merge and I was able to merge all of these files in. So if I go over here, you'll see that it updated again. So you can see that it is slowly folding all of these old branches back up into the master branch. Now that was code from, the last one was from April. This one is from, yeah, April 25th. 
So I have a bunch of changes that happened from a long time ago. So this is something that's really powerful about Git. Git can, because Git knows the history of everything that's happened in the project, even if somebody gives you a change from a year ago, it's pretty easy to merge it into the code that you have right now because Git knows how everything evolved and it can automatically figure out how to get that code integrated into the current code. Okay, let's do the next one. Here's a change, uh, 141 lines added, 107 lines removed across eight files. So let's try this one. Uh, okay, and when, when was this one from? This one is from 15 hours ago. Okay, great. So here I'm gonna merge, uh, what was the name of the branch? Uh, 100, issues 1005, use context. Okay, no problem. That one worked. Another recursive merge. So here, if I go here, you'll see that once again, it's just slowly taking all of these branches and it's merging them back in together. The history of all these commits is still the same. Every one of these commits, like the Kubernetes one from April is still here. It still looks exactly the same, but you can see that everything's getting merged together because we're adding these recursive three-way merge commits on, on, on top of it. Uh, okay, here's the next one. This is removing 261 lines of code. This is a big deletion. Um, this is from, in six files um, from 15 hours ago as well. Okay, so let's take this one and let's do it. So I'm going to git merge. Um, again, no problems. So it took all those changes. If I go over here, you can see that I've got this, this commit here has been merged onto here, but this commit when it was made was made, if I follow this line down, it was made against this version of the master branch. So even though people were working against different versions of the code, I'm able to take the work of different people from different times and I'm able to merge them in. I don't have to merge them necessarily in the right order. Everything, everything's looking good. Um, okay, so this is the last one here. So we've got a, a PR from five hours ago called search result. Let's try this one. Okay, so here we're five pull requests in, and it's the first time we've had a conflict. So it says, um, I tried to merge this file automatically, but there was a conflict and I couldn't do it. I tried to merge this file automatically and there was a conflict, I couldn't do it. And it had to stop. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do git status. And you can see that both of these files have problems in it. So let's open this up and take a look. When you jump into Visual Studio Code and if you need to find the files that are no good, you can go to the Git uh, source control area rather than to your files and it'll show you that these files have conflicts. So if I click on this first one here, search page, you can see in my, I don't know if you can see how well you can see this. In my scroll bar, it has the green colors for the conflict markers. So you wanna scroll down and find these conflict markers. So it says the head has this, and this is what the incoming change on the other branch has. I find that sometimes it's a lot easier if you look at these changes um, side by side. So if I compare these changes side by side, it's a little bit easier for me to see what's going on here. So on the left, uh, on the left you have what's currently on master. On the right you have what's coming in. So you can see here that we used to do, like master has removed this extra check. So we used to do if we don't have any results, return null, and then it says if results. Well, that's been removed because if we don't have any results here we and we return, we know that we have results here. So this is not needed. This is unnecessary code. And you can see that over here, it looks like the incoming change 
has improved on this. It's checking to see if the search text has a length greater than zero, if the results are equal to zero. Then it's gonna, it's gonna display this message and say no results were found. And then down here, you can see that it looks like this looks like a fairly big change, but I don't think it's as big as, as, it, as it appears. What it looks like to me is that it's been, uh, there's only one thing that's been added, which is uh, the link has been added here. So we always had a key, we always had the author, we always had the post, but now we have a link. And because of the way the code formatting is being done, it, it's gone vertical instead of going across, but that looks okay. And over here, you can see that the, the closing parenthesis for this if doesn't exist here because the if has been dealt with up here. So to me, it looks like with this code, if I was gonna do this code, we could take all of the incoming changes. So I could go back here and I could go to this page and I could say, let's accept the incoming change. And so now it has deleted the other version of the code and it's only got this one version of the code. I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna go and check on the other one. So the other one is this one right here. And if I scroll down, you can see that the conflict is quite, quite big. Let's, let's do, again, let's do this comparison. So if I go up and I do a side-by-side -side comparison, it doesn't help me a ton. Um, so I can see, for example, that it looks like we've added code here to deal with uppercase letters, ver uppercase versus lowercase, which we don't have over here. Over here, it looks like we've added some kind of a, of a handler for opening a window, which is interesting. And then there's a bunch of changes in here to the layout of this. So when I look at this, I don't have enough information because I didn't write this code and I didn't write this code. I didn't write either of these two pieces of code. I can't look at them for two minutes and say, oh yeah, obviously it's this or obviously it's that. What we're gonna have to do here is I'm gonna have to work with all of the developers who wrote this code. So probably what I would do is I would go back to Calvin who's working on this and I would say to him, you're gonna need to update your code to be in line with what we have on master. So that's a topic that we're going to get into in a coming week in the coming weeks when we talk about uh, doing a rebase. But for now, I wanted you to see that sometimes a conflict like this is going to require you to know what's going on in the code. I mean, I could make some guesses. I could read this for half an hour and I could figure out which version I think is right. But probably I need to get on the phone or get on Slack and have a conversation. So it's not a Git problem anymore, it's a project problem to figure out with the developers which, uh, which one of these two solutions you know, we should actually be doing. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this here. I wanna, do, I wanna just mention one more thing, um, and that is if you're in the middle of a merge like this and you, you say to yourself, I don't know what to do, like this merge, there's, the conflicts are too big, what I'm gonna do here, I'm in the middle of the merge, but you'll notice here that it gives me a hint. It says, if you ever need to abort the merge, just do git merge dash abort. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm going to, I'm just gonna bail out of this so that I don't have, so now my working tree is clean. These files aren't changed anymore so that I can come back and try the merge again. Maybe when the person is with me or I'm, I'm on Slack or on the phone with them and we can go through it together and try and figure out what to do. So that is, that is merging.